Welcome to Hopeside Vespers. Thank you for joining us. We are glad to be able to come together week after week to remember God's goodness towards us and to also pray for those who may be going through losses and grief. At this time, uh, before we start our main program, I thought I'll share a video that shows how we worship at Hopeside, which is basically from uh, this place that you are seeing. And after that, I will uh, share other music that has been planned. Thank you all for joining. May God be with us as we worship together and praise his holy name. In his presence, there is comfort. In his presence, we can find meaning, no matter what we are going through. Today, we will have Mr. Nelson Kajekar bring us God's word. May we find meaning and inspiration by today's message and songs. You just saw uh, Miss Bernadette and uh, her husband, Winston Charles, singing uh, at a Sabbath service that we have every week right over here. We will hear a great song that uh, they have sung, 
and uh, uploaded recently. Let me upload that. Let me share that with you right now. That was a beautiful song by Bernadette and uh, Winston Charles. This time, Ms. Monica Devi will offer the opening prayer. Thank you, Monica, for joining us. Happy Sabbath and good evening, Hopeside Church. 
Let's all bow our heads as we welcome in the Sabbath this evening. Holy Father God, we thank you so much for bringing us here this evening, for allowing us to humbly come to thee. Though we are fallen, Father God, you have, are so merciful and kind to us and have allowed us to see through another week, Father God. Thank you so much for giving us this wonderful Sabbath, for allowing us to come into your presence. Thank you for making the ultimate sacrifice that we have this opportunity to come to thee and to be able to call you, Father, and to be able to worship you, to be able to be in your presence, to be able to be loved by you. Thank you so much for your grace and mercy that you show on each and every one of us every single day of our lives. Thank you so much for the mercy that you give us. Thank you so much for loving us through everything that we are, Father God. And this evening, Lord, I pray in a special way that you will be with each and every person attending wherever they may be, Father God, in whatever circumstances that they may be. I just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit may fill their hearts and that the speaker may fill our hearts with your message and not with our own. I just pray, Lord, that we will be able to see and have a relationship with you that you so desire. Thank you so much for loving us always. Please be with all of those that are struggling through this pandemic, Father God. It's not an easy time. But with you, Lord, there's always joy and happiness and help us to look to you rather than sink into this world. Thank you so much for allowing us to come to you this evening, for allowing us to have these moments with you. Help us not to take them for granted, Father God, for there are many around this world that are not free to worship as we are. And thank you so much for being close to us, though they, we struggle with many things, Father God, especially those that might be struggling with loss of family members and friends. It's a hard time, Father God, but with you, there's eternity, so there's always hope. Thank you so much for loving each and every one of us, for guiding us, for leading us, for allowing us to have you in our hearts whenever we ask. Help us not to push you away, even though there are times that we want to. Thank you once again for hearing these prayers, for answering these prayers accordingly, and for knowing, Father God, that you have already answered them before we've spoken them. I just pray that you will continue to bless this church and continue to bless this service. I pray that we will be all um, enriched and that much more closer to thee after tonight. Thank you so much for hearing us. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Monica, for the beautiful prayer. We will hear a special song by our speaker, Mr. Nelson Kajeker. The song is called, Are You Ready? And uh, I hope that you'll be blessed with that song. The theme of the Bible is Jesus, and how we like to save them. The plan of salvation assures us is coming back. for G. 
Scripture reading by Neha Arjekar. Today the scripture reading is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 23. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verses 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside steel waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. E though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord bless these words. Amen. Mrs. Elizabeth Kajekar will introduce uh, Mr. Nelson Project. Good evening and happy Sabbath to all. It's my privilege to introduce my husband, Mr. Nelson Khajikar. We have been married for the past 40 years and so I know him quite well. After serving in India for 30 years as a teacher, headmaster, principal and a registrar. He migrated to the U.S. in 2009. Presently, he is working as a nurse. He also is an elder in the Jersey City Heights Church. Thank you and uh, welcome Mr. Nelson Kajekar for your song, beautiful song, a meaningful song and now we share God's word that has put in your heart. Good evening, friends. Happy Sabbath. Uh, can you hear me quite well? Yes, yes we can. Thank you so much. So greetings to you from New Jersey, Jersey City, especially Jersey City Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, it is a privilege. I want to thank the Hopeside Church for giving me this invitation to share God's word with all of us. I uh, want to thank Sister Pansy and of course everybody involved in uh, inviting me for this great occasion. 
Shall we have a small word of prayer before I begin my message? Merciful Father, which art in heaven, thank you so much, O Lord. As we dwell, up, dwell upon your word, we pray, O Lord, that you will enrich us with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to start off this uh, evening on uh, 2020. Everyone wants to forget 2020, most probably because it was such a devastating year. It took us all by surprise. We were not ready for it. And it has really shocked and shaken the entire globe, the entire world. And so everyone wants to forget 2020. But the more we try to forget 2020, it forcefully comes back. And it has come back with even greater force in 2021. When Jesus and his disciples were admiring the temple at Jerusalem, Jesus makes a prophecy. He says that not one stone, or in short, this temple will be destroyed. Not one stone will be upon the other stone. It will be trampled. It will be crumpled. And so his disciples ask him, when will all, all these things take place? And Jesus enumerates uh, sign after sign, wars, Rumors of wars, famine, pestilence, pandemics, as we call it today. And uh, one thing that Jesus says is that all these are the beginning of sorrows. When the pandemic takes place, when wars take place, when earthquakes take place, he says, these are just the beginning. And if this is the beginning, my dear friends, you can imagine what the end is going to be. And so I just thought of beginning my message this evening by reminding us about 2020. You don't want to be reminded. Because of the pandemic, the whole world is bricked, gripped with fear and uncertainties. Drastic changes never seen before have taken place. Everything has changed. Our dress has changed. Our diet has changed. Our travel has changed. Our plans have changed. Our education has changed. Our worship has changed. Our aims and goals have changed. Our work has changed. Our business has changed. Our outlook has changed. Even our worship has changed. We already know that People have died and are still dying in millions. This is a grim reality that we are living in. And so I was wondering, when so much has taken place, what should I speak on? What should I speak on? Everyone's mind has been disturbed. Everyone's confidence has been shaken. And so this evening, my topic for this short meditation will be confidence in times of crisis. Confidence in times of crisis. Now, there are various scriptural passages in the Bible. And some of these passages are, are so powerful, they are so deep that to read them, to memorize them is to just like experience them. And Psalms 23 is one of those passages which if you read prayerfully with all diligence, this passage becomes alive. You can literally see the green pastures that the psalmist is talking about. And so this evening, we are going to talk about, we are going to meditate upon Psalms 23. Not everything in detail, 
but keeping this topic in mind confidence in times of crisis you will agree with me my dear friends that we are facing one of the greatest crisis in life the pandemic everyone's confidence has been shaken we are so uncertain about what is going to happen tomorrow politically what will happen we don't know physically what will happen we don't know geographically what will happen we don't know spiritually what will happen we don't know and so we live in a very very uncertain world our confidence has been shattered and how can we be confident in such times in times of crisis that is the message for this evening so we will go over psalms 23 and try to get some points some insight from the life of david uh Psalms 23 by the way was written by David king David when of course he became the king uh Psalms 23 shall we say is a personal testimony of king David his personal experience with god Psalms 23 is a balm to our weary and wounded souls Psalms 23 covers all of life the good times as well as the bad times times of prosperity and times of adversity psalms 23 contains joys as well as sorrows it contains green pastures as well as valley of the shadow of death psalms 23 was written about 1000 years before jesus there are 43 bible verses that talk or give reference to a shepherd uh let me tell you a little bit about shepherd now in the days of jesus in the bible times being a shepherd was a lowly profession was not a very reputable profession only those who were not educated those who those who were unschooled those who were low Uh, those who were maybe small they took up the profession of uh, shepherd the illiterate the insignificant you don't have to be educated to be a shepherd and so uh, the shepherd's profession was looked down upon but in the sight of god every profession has dignity in fact when jesus was born the birth, the news of his birth was first given to the shepherds and so we see that uh, in fact jesus declares himself to be the good shepherd i am the good shepherd i know my sheep my sheep know me they hear my voice they recognize me so jesus himself identifies himself as the good shepherd so let us go to psalms 23 uh psalms 23 is the most beloved and well known psalm a very popular psalm especially psalms 23 is uh, most of course preached upon especially during the funerals during the funeral the family is in crisis the family is devastated near and dear ones are saddened are shocked and when psalms 23 comes along and is preached it gives that shattered family that shattered member a little bit of confidence a little bit of balm to our weary souls and so as we go through today's message what i want to emphasize in short is that david when he faced goliath david was a young boy 
most probably he was a teenager maybe he must have just started getting his beard and his mustache just started because when king david look uh, king saul looks at david says you are a small boy you are not even of the age of joining the military in order to join the military you had to be at least 20 years old his three brothers were in the military david's three elder brothers and so david was a small boy even goliath mocks him says kunt hey, you kunt israel entire nation of israel find someone worthy to come and fight with me so what i want to say this evening is from where did david get his confidence there are several times in the life of david where he was in a crisis like situation and one crisis of course is in front of goliath so from where did he get this confidence of facing goliath so bravely the entire nation of israel had backed out the entire nation of israel proved to be cowards the moment goliath used to shout from the mountain top the children of israel the army of saul they used to run into the mountain into the caves into whatever hiding they could find and so the entire nation of israel was shattered under such circumstances even saul is devastated saul cannot find any one to go and face the challenge of goliath and so david comes on the scene and we all know the story very very well but the point that i want to emphasize is from where did david get so much confidence the whole nation never had that confidence his brothers never had that confidence the army never had that confidence king saul never had that confidence so from where did david get this confidence my dear friends before this before david could face goliath david was exposed to different circumstances in his life and i would like to say that god is the one who orchestrated events in the life of david in such a way that david's confidence in god will be built david was exposed to the lion david was exposed to the bear now this is quite challenging we know humanly speaking that uh, a man does not stand any chance against a lion a man with bare hands or maybe a man with just a shepherd's rod in his hand a man human being no matter how strong he is stands no chance against a bear or a lion david did not have any weapon with him where is the lion and the bear their body itself is a weapon the jaws the claws see how in fact i was doing little bit uh, read read up on the strength of a lion strength of a bear says that a lion is around 8 to 10 times stronger than a human being the strongest human being 8 to 10 times and so when david is taking care of his father's sheep a lowly job as i said previously a lion and a bear comes and attacks the sheep and by the grace of god by the almighty power of god david is able to defeat the lion defeat the bear now this david was exposed to such a test 
God orchestrated events in the life of David in such a way that God himself exposed David to the lion, to the bear. Why? Not to find out what material David was made up of. God already knew that David was firm. But this was for David rather to build confidence in God. And so when he faces Goliath, he tells King Saul, I will go. King Saul discourages him. He says, you are a young boy. You are a small boy. You have no military experience. You are not even a registered soldier. You don't know nothing about fight. And then David tells him that while I was taking care of my father's sheep, I killed a lion and I killed a bear with my bare hands. And so King Saul did not have too much of a choice. His uh, dignity, his ego, everything is at stake. And so says something is better than nothing. And so he tells David, okay, go. Very reluctantly he sends David, okay, go. So when David goes, we again find a crisis. We again find that how David addresses Goliath. Goliath makes fun of David. But David says that you come to me with a spear. You come to me with a sword. You come to me with your military armor. You come to me with your helmet. But I come to you in the name of God. I come to you in the name of Yahweh. Today I will kill you. The Lord will give me the victory. My dear friends, look at David's confidence. God had exposed David to various situations in his life where slowly, slowly, God developed the confidence of David in himself. And so David was able to face Goliath because the Lord was with him. After, Saul, after David kills Goliath, after David receives a lot of glory and all of that, David faces another crisis in his life. The first crisis, of course, was when he faces the lion and the bear. The second crisis in his life was when he faces Goliath. And the third crisis is a very regrettable crisis in his life, my dear friends that King Saul, his guru, or shall we say his mentor, he is upset that David is getting more praise than myself. You know that song with the woman sang, Saul killed thousands and David killed ten thousands. So Saul was upset. Saul was jealous. Saul was envious. He could not swallow, he could not digest that. And so he gets after David's life. And so David is in another crisis. But my dear friends, I want all of us to take a lesson that if God is with us, no matter what crisis we are in, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. So Psalms, he wrote Psalms 23, taking all of these events in his life, Edo I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. He was in green pastures. He was beside the still waters. The Lord was restoring his soul. But then suddenly, he goes to the valley of the shadow of death. But he says that I will not fear because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So David faces the third crisis in his life. And that is when King Saul is after David's life. David did not know the intentions, evil intentions of King Saul. When David was in the palace, 
you all know the story very very well that several times at least three times king saul tried to kill david right in the palace took a javelin and threw it at david but miraculously god saves david and david escapes but saul is not satisfied saul is not satisfied and uh, take over here no what's thank you so saul is after david's life david is more or less alone he has just a few people with him now look at the comparison between david and saul saul <clears throat> is the king of israel saul has position saul has power saul has the whole army the whole nation whatever saul says will be done and so saul with all his might with his position with his army pursues david and so david is in a crisis but david does not hang his hands you know cowardly david still has that same courage that he had when he faced goliath when he faced the lion and the secret of david's life was the lord was with him and one more point that i'd like to add over here is that king saul also it records in second samuel 18 verse 12 even king saul was afraid of david imagine the king with so much power so much position the whole army at his command king saul is afraid of david and you know what the reason is second samuel 18 12 says king saul was afraid of david because the lord was with him there's a lesson my dear friends for us to learn that if the lord is with us then no matter what we go through how many enemies we have surrounding us the lord will take care of us and so we know the story how david eventually becomes the king of israel how david is hunted by king saul like an animal of prey how the lord miraculously takes care of him just like king saul was afraid of david because the lord was with david the same way my dear friends satan is afraid of us whenever he sees god with us whenever we are with the lord satan gets tremors satan gets a shock he starts trembling whenever we pray he starts trembling whenever we worship god he starts shivering whenever we sing praises to god whenever we come on our knees satan starts shivering satan becomes nervous and so we have several lessons to learn from the life of david that edo i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies the lord will take care of us surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house in the house of the lord forever and ever so i pray my dear friends that the lord will give us the confidence during this time of camp pandemic because as i said in the beginning this is just the beginning of sorrows the worst is yet to come and we know we know we are told in advance what all is going to happen when the seven plagues will take place when the sunday law will be passed when our assets when our schools when our hospitals when our houses will be taken over by the government when we will have to leave the cities and go into the wilderness 
this thing should not catch us by surprise. We will be in a crisis, but when we are in the time of crisis, we will have the confidence because the Lord is with us. May the Lord bless us, build our confidence. As he exposed David to various circumstances in his life that built his confidence, the Lord exposes us also to various circumstances in our life. And these circumstances are meant to build our confidence in him. May the Lord bless each and every one of us. Happy Sabbath. God bless each one of you. The mighty is no match for God and especially when he is with us. Thank you, Brother Kajakar, for that wonderful message. At this time, we will hear the closing special song called Someone is Praying for You by Heritage Singers.
Share your bow our heads for prayer. Eternal Father, gracious Lord, loving Redeemer, thank you so much, O Lord, for this Sabbath day. Thank you so much, O Lord, for this worship, which we are able to have virtually. Thank you, message. Thank you, O Lord, for this evening's message. That even though we pass through the valley of the shadow of death. We need not fear anything as long as you are with us. And so, Father, lead us by your hand into greener pastures, especially into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Kajakar, for the wonderful message. You're welcome. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Next week, Pastor Jason Israel will uh, bring us a message from Pune, India. I hope that you will join us again. And at this time, we will have a meet and greet, and we can talk about the message. Uh, we can talk to each other about anything else. I want to thank the Lord for giving us this privilege to worship Him and welcome the Holy Sabbath day. Yeah. I'd like to thank my niece, Monica, for joining our worship and leading us in the opening prayer. My heartfelt thanks to the Kajekar family for their participation in our worship tonight. Neha, thank you for reading the scripture reading. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you, Elizabeth, for introducing the speaker. And I would like to thank Mr. Nelson Kajekar for bringing us this timely message of confidence in times of crisis. Psalms 23 came alive to us. It is a balm to our weary soul. E though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. What a beautiful promise. Thank you for joining our Vesper service and happy Sabbath to all. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you Nelson. Nelson. Thank you, Nelson. Uh, nice uh, seeing you, Alfred. Nice to meet you. Kasakai. Barakai, Barakai. Barakai, Nelson. Nice talk, nice message, uh, Nelson. You're welcome. Praise it. the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, the Nelson, Judy. how are you? I am good, Akka. Uh, you're doing okay? Yes, yes, I'm doing okay. Who's this? Banji Akka? Yes! <laughs> How are you? I'm doing fine. Oh, good, good, good. How is Shaggy? I think Shaggy is fine. Say, Jason is fine. Everybody, they both are in Baltimore. I stay oh. in Maryland. Mm -hmm. I stay in Maryland. Okay. Yeah, okay. my son just got married, so I'm all alone. Oh. But I told I'm not all alone. He comes every two weeks, buys all the groceries, everything, gives it to oh, me. And he says, nice. anything else, anytime you need anything else, just call me. <laughs> so nice of him. Yeah. God is so good. All the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need to send you a picture of your daughter and your son. Okay. When okay. I went to Calvary Park, they were small. I took a picture with them uh, near okay. the church. Please, please send it. Please send okay. it. Okay. I'll get okay. you. I'll get you uh, the thing um, uh, number, and I send it to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Akka. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All park people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Park. Yeah. I have to go for a conference call. We do prayer from nine o'clock to ten o'clock. Okay, ma'am. Take care. Okay. Take care. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pan Chief, for uh, inviting me. Uh, wonderful program. Thank you, Alfred, uh, for joining. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm a always, pleasure to I'm, see. 
yeah yeah <laughs> uh, 6:30 is my time starts uh, i see i i know and, uh, i know 6:30 is very early for uh, you in india early for us but anyway it is good for to listen to messages morning yes it's a saturday. blessing it's a blessing it's a be- a beginning we every morning saturday we have 6:30 now till uh, mm-hmm. three, five o'clock oh okay okay so we attend this five o'clock i also attend uh, chemsford uk mm-hmm. and oh. uh, give some permission. thank you for uh, everything and i appreciate you all thank uh, you thank you welcome so the others join in so has you know mr nelson kajikar who else is there Premi. Premi is there? Yeah, yeah Premi is there. Yeah, and the, my, my sister Vilasini is there. Sona is there. Yeah. My sister Ranga is there. Thank you for that beautiful message. Thank you. 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 Thank